I am so jealous that you got to see Metallica. It's tough because once you spend like, you know, two hours with Metallica, you're kind of ruined listening to any other music. Right? Nothing just hits as hard. Because there's a certain intensity. Yeah. And you, it kind of gets right into your your skin and bones and DNA. And now, like, I want every song to sound like Metallica. Like, I think every, you could, they should record ever, every song ever recorded and and redo it. Oh, I that think would it, be so cool. What would that sound like? It sound like this. We do all the ABBA songs. Metallica should do them all. (laughs) See, see, isn't that better? Wow, so much better. Even the sensitive songs. (laughs) Kiss from a rose. Sorry, Seal. No more Seal. See? I mean, is it that better? That's beautiful. That's better. That's better. Every song ever recorded. Redone by Metallica. Bill Blind, the lawyer guys here. Hey. How was your weekend? Ah, I was awesome. Other than the gas prices. Right, man. Holy cow. I, I opened my wallet and my, my credit card shed a tear as it came Aww, out. It was Aww. whimpering. Too. Yeah. It, was it whimpering. quivered like it was afraid. <laughs> Don't do it, Dad. Don't <laughs> do it. Don't do it. So um, I want to check in on the, the – I want to expl- get some explanation of the, the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing oh, because questions. it has gone to the jury now. Yes. So what does he do? He leaves and he goes and plays rock and roll with Jeff back in England over the weekend. A, what a great life. <laughs> right? Right? So he is suing her. She is suing him. So when the jury comes back, what are they actually going to tell us? Well, I haven't been following too closely, but I'm going to assume that the judges ruled on motions and they probably each they probably each filed motions saying that, you know, it, either – this shouldn't go before the jury. Right. You should dismiss her claim and right. vice versa. And I'm assuming all the claims have gone forward. But right. the jury is going to have to decide culpability, liability here. Right. And determine whether or not she, in fact, you know, did damage to his reputation. She basically defamed him right. in that publication. And they're going to have to consider her claim. Uh, it's all going to be credibility between these two. And I think – from what I've seen, it looks like she lacks a lot of credibility. Yeah. And her, you know, and here's the hard thing: her legal team lacks credibility. They they really stumble and fumble, and they were so bad. And and that's unfortunate. I you know for the you know whether it's Amber Heard or someone else, if your attorneys are appear incompetent, they lose credibility, which means you, as the defendant in a criminal case or the litigant in a civil case. You've lost credibility. Yeah, they're literally representing you. Right, and and it shouldn't be that way, but we're all human beings, and we're judging everything, including not just the people on the stand, but the people presenting the case. Yeah, True. That's why you can buy a cheap car, people, but don't skimp on a, on a good lawyer. You right. know what I'm saying? That's like, right. you know, don't get you, sometimes you get what you pay for. I have a question. Yeah. Okay, so I've, I've been following it, and um, one of the things that struck me during this was that Amber heard very often – after a testimony was given and, you know, then um, then Johnny Depp's lawyers came back and said, you know, isn't it true that, you know, this person said this about you and it, like completely contradicting what she said, like a, a witness came up and said, no, that's not true. And so Johnny's lawyer would say, isn't it true that his bodyguard said that it did not happen the way that you said? And she'd say, I would not agree with that. And wow. And and then it, it came out like it seemed like she was just perjuring herself the whole time. They had this huge list of witnesses that contradicted what she said. Can she be held accountable for that, having perjured herself? I doubt it, because when you ask the question, isn't it true? 
I mean, it's almost like an interpretation. That's right. You know, there, there's right. wiggle room there. Or it could be, you know, she can, there's lots of arguments to be made. I don't remember it that way, or that's not my recollection, or no, that's not true, or that's not my interpretation. But if she's constantly contradicted by the evidence, that's, she's being impeached with it. That's an impeachment technique. Wow. Uh, she's just losing credibility left and right. And there are battles you just don't need, you don't need to, you don't need to win every battle. And mm-hmm. if you're trying to win every battle and you're constantly losing, you're losing credibility with the jury. There's just some things you're like, yep, that's true. You know, I was mistaken in my testimony. Do you think a jury makes up its mind way early in a trial? Or do you think a jury can over time, like if you go in thinking one thing in day one or day five, you go like, oh, this, this, this person's guilty. Do, do you, can you change someone's mind over time, do you think? Or do you think a jury makes up its mind fairly early in a case? The way it should be and the way it works out are two different things. Yeah. I mean, the juries are, in every case, are instructed not to, I mean, don't even discuss the case until it's time to deliberate. Do not make up your mind one way or the other. You need to be open to both sides. Uh, and I'll just relay it in a criminal prosecution case. Um, you have to le- you have to have an open mind. But I, I do think juries start to formulate an opinion after opening statements. And that's why opening statements are so important, because you're setting out your theory of the case, whether it's a prosecutor or as a defense attorney. Now, you're, those minds can be changed over time. But what happens is people begin to defend their position in their mind, and then they begin to give more importance to certain evidence and disregard other evidence that don't uh, that aren't congruent or in agreement with what they already believe to be true. So they've, they've already formed a bias. Yes. Yeah, and that's you. You should have yes. been. You should. Wouldn't she have been great? A, a great lawyer. She would have been awesome. You would have been made. It's not too late. It's not. Too she late. already knows. She knows. She already. She instinctually. It's she not knows. Instincts, man. Absolutely. You could do it. You could be. <laughs> my God. You two could have a podcast it's together. Too much work. Too much work. It is work. a lot of work. Oh my God. <laughs> it's too much work. I'd rather play Pat Benatar. <laughs> my nephew just who graduated just graduated BC Law. I'm like, yeah. Now the real work begins. Studying for the bar. Oh. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, like you, you don't know, you're not an attorney yet, not you until mean, you pass the bar. Do you mean studying at the bar? Right. That you know what? Maybe <laughs> that, that maybe that. that was my problem the first time around. <laughs> I, I got confused about studying for the bar versus at the bar. You've been a, you've done okay, Bill Bly. You've done just fine. Bill is here. If you have a question, you can ask their attorney here. Seven nine two one zero two nine this morning. Uh, this dude, he, he's amazing. He's fantastic. He's been joining us every Tuesday, and, and you guys have been digging it, so we're keeping it rolling. I have a question for Bill. All right, Bill Bly. Hey. Question. Go ahead. So I have lawyers like Amber Heard's lawyers, and I had to fire them on the eve of trial and get a new lawyer. And so I feel like you don't know what kind of lawyer you have until closer to the end. So I feel like I didn't succeed in my trial. So what can I do? Well, I, I'm assuming there was a verdict in your trial. Yes. So Yes, and I had to pay both lawyers because I didn't um, get my lawyer fees waived. Yeah. I had to pay both sets of lawyers. Whoa. So she had to pay the she had to pay the original lawyer. She fired them. Oh, she had to pay everybody. What a saga. Holy <laughs> cow. Maybe, poor, she might have wanted to just take that deal right off the table. You know, <laughs> right in the beginning that it may have been negotiated for you. So she had she said she had like Amber Heard like lawyers. <laughs> and you know what? We all know what that means we now. Do. Right. Like completely incompetent, right. like a little bit bumbling right. and not organized. Well, like, not understanding the rules of evidence. That's a big one. Right. <laughs> Right. Johnny, she needed Johnny Depp on her team right. to help educate the lawyers. Or, yeah, sing a song or dress up like a pie. What When it comes to family, when we say family, usually that means divorce yeah. situations. Um, what is it? What, what, there, you say there are two types of lawyers in that situation. Yeah, I, mean, I, I have a philosophy, and that is there's two types of attorneys in any case, problem solvers and problem creators. You want problem solvers when you're dealing with family situations. Uh, especially when there's children involved, because you can create so much animosity. The problem is, uh, ironically, when I say the word problem, you might get the problem solver on your side and your spouse gets the problem creator. Uh It takes two to dance. You can't just dance that tune all by yourself. And if you have someone that's a problem creator on either side, it just makes for a very expensive, long mess. 
Um, and at the end, nobody's going to be happy. Yeah, and bi- really bitter people will look for that kind yes. of lawyer and say, oh, I got a bulldog. It's it yeah. That's really oh. stick. And, and it just makes everything so much worse. Right. As soon, if you call our office and you're like, I want you I want you to be a bulldog and attack, attack. I'm like, you got the wrong law firm. Really? That is That is not what you want for yeah. a family attorney. Yeah. Not if you want to have, like, preserve your relationship with your, your kids. And they do find out, like, there are some parents who are like, you know, they, they, they think the kids are just young. And I've seen it, you know, with friends who've been divorced. And one party has, like, really tried to stick it to the other one. And then the kid eventually grows up and realizes, like, everything that they went through. And they're like, wow, that was really a crap thing that you did. Yeah. Right. You know, like, to make it that contentious and to put them through that much stress. So but at right. the same time, people want what they're due, right? Or what they think they're due. Oh. I mean, that that's all the time. What do you mean I got to pay child support? Well, right. I'm sorry, you, you had children and right. we're not the custodial parents. So now you're going to have to pay child support. Fascinating. So get a problem solver. solver. Yeah. That's a good litmus test. You know, if you unfortunately have to go into that situation, right? Right. And so. a problem solver doesn't mean that it's um, a weaker attorney. It means, you know, that's somebody who is really looking out for your best interests. Right. Oh. There there are attorneys out there that I, we sometimes wonder, are they just doing this to create more legal fees? Because right. the run stuff it, we're fighting it. about Do is Do you absurd. see that? Right. Right. They're just doing this for more hours. Yeah. I mean, some, I mean, I hate to say that, but I, I have that feeling about some attorneys we, we wow. deal with. Yes. What are you working on this week, Bill Bly, in the next, next couple of weeks? Can you tell us? Uh, yeah, we've got, we've got a jury selection. We've got four juries, I believe, we're picking on OUI charges, drunk driving charges, right. this month right? Uh, in a couple different counties. And wow. we have another a serious felony that's picking, I believe, in the beginning of July. And then we have another another gross sexual assault case that'll be picking this summer so that we're getting ready for. Lots of stuff on the agenda. Oh, you I better call Bly. I just made that up. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you're a genius. That's why I'm here. (laughs) Went to Metallica Sunday night. I have not been in New England in a couple years, man. More than a couple years. Five years, six years, something Mm. like that. And... um, so they were fantastic, and uh, we were leaving the leaving uh, the show, which is uh, in Harvard, and so you're in Cambridge, and so as the Metallica crowd is coming out, the Game 7 bar crowd, yes, co- they, we all merged together just in the final seconds, and here's what it sounded like. <laughs> Streets of Cambridge. Pandemonium. Happy, happy people. So the Celtics, here we go. In the finals, finals start Thursday in San Fran. So it's um, Thursday and Sunday. And then back here at the Garden Wednesday and Friday for games uh, three and four. So the uh, Johnny Depp Amber Heard uh, trial is uh, now in the jury's hands. Mm-hmm. So we're awaiting a verdict now. He's suing her for $50 million. She's countersuing for $100 million. I don't know how it all works out here. But Johnny Depp, so what do you do? The jury's out. I mean, the jury is making their decision. They're uh, deliberating for the long weekend. And what do you do if you're Johnny Depp? You go to England and play with Jeff Beck and cover Jimi Hendrix songs, man. It's all right. Johnny singing. There he is. Now, if the jury was out of my trial, I'd be like in a fetal position under the kitchen table for the weekend. Yeah. Not Johnny, man. He's out there rocking out. That was in England. Meanwhile, in France, what the hell with the guy throwing cake at the Mona Lisa? I know. That's not okay. He is not. He was not a well person, though. So I guess uh, I didn't know this, but there's the thing has got bulletproof glass on it. Yeah, I didn't know that either until this incident. Uh, which is smart. And he was dressed as a, a little old lady, and he was yelling about the environment, and he right. was just not a, not a well person. But I learned a lot about the Mona Lisa. Let them eat cake. Wow. So there you go. But I think the big winner for this long weekend. Is Tom Cruise. Here we go. In three, two, one. 
Everyone here is the best there is. Yeah. Who the hell are they going to get to teach us? Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell. My God, $156 million. Best Tom Cruise opening ever. What, what's, what movie is it? I don't Top even know. Gun Maverick. Oh. What the hell? Good morning, aviators. This is your captain speaking. We're going into combat on a level no living pilot's ever seen. Not even him. Huge. Wow. Move the, but you know what? They've waited what three years to release this thing, this Top Gun reboot, and uh, it paid off. Man, he still Tom Cruise still brings people in the movie theaters, and he's amazing because everything that he flies and or or drives or whatever in these movies, he knows how he is licensed to do it, wow. which is really cool. He's v- actually a very interesting person, super intense. Yeah, I bet. A very, very interesting guy. Yeah. Like, he loves to do his own stunts and, and everything, so. There you go. So, Tom Cruise wins the weekend, everybody.